elementary teacher, one standard that you are responsible for teaching is graphs and data representation. One of the most commonly used graphs in elementary grades is the bar graph, which is a visual representation of data using rectangular bars of varying lengths. In this video, we're going to explore the parts of a bar graph and some fun activities that you can incorporate into your teaching. So if you're ready, give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let's dive in and get started. First, let's touch base on what bar graphs are. So bar graphs are a way to show data that has been collected by using rectangular bars. Before teaching your students how to create a graph, it's important to understand the parts of a bar graph and what they mean. I always use an anchor chart to teach the key parts of a bar graph, and we review and discuss these different vocabulary words. So first we talk about is the title. This is a brief description of the data that's being represented on the graph. The title should be short, clear, and to the point. Then we have the scale. The scale on a bar graph shows a set of numbers to help measure data and shows the way that numbers are used when we are representing different types of data. And so depending on the grade level that is being taught, a scale can have different number patterns, such as counting by ones, twos, fives, or even tens. And then we also discuss the labels. The labels go along the axis of the graph to show what is being measured. The rectangular bars are shown above each label to represent the value of that category on the graph. These are typically color coded and or shaded differently for easy differentiation. And so as our students understand the parts of a bar graph, next we need to show them how to collect data and actually create a graph. To model this, I like to use blank anchor chart paper and sticky notes to create a bar graph. In my guided math units, they create a different whole group graph like this each day. You could, if you wanted to laminate a blank anchor chart paper so that it can be used over and over again and you can use a dry erase marker. Or you could easily create a new graph each time on a different piece of paper. What you're going to do is model the steps for creating a graph and asking questions such as where should the title go? Where should the label go? And so forth. You could even place items in the wrong place and have your students correct them. So in this example, students are going to create a class graph based on which sport they would rather play. What you're gonna do is give each student a sticky note and allow them to come up and place their sticky note onto the anchor chart paper above the label of their choosing. You can see in the photo example that the sticky notes create large rectangular bars on the graph to show the data. Then what I like to do is I use a set of question stems. These are pretty generic and I like to keep them on hand. And then I use these question stems to ask them different questions about the data that is represented on their graph. So when teaching bar graphs to your students, here are a few things that I want you to keep in mind. First is use real life examples. Think of things that are relatable to your students, such as what are their favorite foods, their favorite toys or animals? What is something that would interest them? And so in this example, our students played drop and graph with emojis because what kid doesn't love emojis, right? So each student had an emoji board and a pom-pom ball. They had to drop their palm onto the board and then record their data based on which emoji their palm landed on. They repeated this process about 20 times, they tallied their results, and then created a bar graph before they answered questions about the data that was shown. Another tip is gonna to be to start with simple graphs. Begin with simple bar graphs that only have a few categories or values to help your students understand the basic concepts. You don't wanna give them 10 different categories for them to choose from, keep it simple. My third tip is going to be to integrate graphs with other mathematical concepts that they've already learned. And this is really easy and simple to do. So for in this example, place some pattern blocks into a tub, have your students grab a handful and tally the results of how many of each block they grabbed. Then they can graph their results. And this practices geometry along with graphing data. 
Another example is this spin add and graph activity. Students simply spin a spinner, they solve the math fact that they land on, and then they tally the sum. They repeat this process multiple times before graphing their results and answering questions about their data. So you can see it's really easy to tie in graphing with other concepts that our students have already learned. Tip number four is going to be to use visuals. Colorful visuals make things hands-on, such as drawing and coloring their own graphs to help your students visualize and understand the data that is being shown. Then my next tip is gonna to be to make sure that you're constantly reinforcing those vocabulary terms, such as the word title and scale throughout your lesson to help your students remember the parts of a bar graph. So now I'm gonna share just a few more simple activities for practicing bar graphs in your classroom. So one of my personal favorites is bowl and graph. If you have a plastic set of bowling pins lying around, great. If not, grab some cups and a ball and it works perfectly too. You can have your students graph the number of pins or cups they knock down each time they roll. This activity is really fun, it's hands-on, and I promise your kids are going to be engaged. Up next is my personal favorite, I must ask you a question. You can give your students a mustache. It's also fun, you can attach a popsicle stick to it. And this can go along with any graphing activity. And so in this example that I'm gonna show you, students surveyed their classmates on their favorite zoo animal. What they do is they partner up and they say, I must ask you, what is your favorite zoo animal? And then they tally their partner's result. They are gonna repeat this process until they've asked every classmate. Then at the end, they are gonna create a bar graph based on the data that they collected. So teaching bar graphs and the parts of a bar graph to your students can be fun and engaging. By using real life examples, starting with simple graphs, and using visuals and reinforcing key vocabulary. You can help your students master this important concept. If you are looking for resources to help you teach bar graphs in your classroom, I'm gonna drop the link in the description of this video to my guided math units for first through third grade, along with some additional resources that could be helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below. Y'all have a blessed one and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.